All right, so in today's tutorial, I want to look at how to simulate the VasiCheck model or the Ostenberg process in R. So to begin with, the VasiCheck model is commonly used in economics to determine where interest rates will move in the future. In other words, it estimates where interest rates will move in a given period of time and can be used to help analysts and investors figure out how the economy and investment will fare in the future. One assumption with regard to the vice check model is that interest rates do not increase or decrease to extreme levels. The reason being that high levels of interest rates can discourage borrowing and investment, which can potentially harm economic activity and prompting policies to suppress the interest rate. Right? So it is for this reason that this assumption has always been um, made mention of. One limitation with the vice check model is that it allows interest rate to be negative, which is something that is highly unfavorable for any economy. So now to the vice check model. The stochastic differential equation for the vice check model is given as shown by the equation below. So in here we have the IT is the derivative or the rate of change of the interest rate. And we have lambda to be the speed of the mean reversal. That is the speed at which the interest rate returns to the long term mean level. We have theta to be the long term mean level of the interest rate calculated based on historical data. We have i index t to be the interest rate given by the short rate. Epsilon is basically the volatility coefficient or the volatility of the interest rate. We have bt to be the burning motion of the winner process. dbt basically describe the increment in the burning motion of the winner process. Now if you take a close look at this equation, we have two components. We have on the right hand side, we have the first component made up of lambda um, into bracket theta minus i t d t. This basically defines the drift term which describes the expected um, change in the interest rate at time t. It is also the part of the model that considers the speed of the mean reversion, indicating how quickly the interest rate reverts back to the long term mean level. And we have the volatility or the diffusion term, right? In here, if this increment or the burden motion goes to zero, what happens is that there will be no market shocks and interest rate will be equal to the long term mean level, right? Now to the simulation. So the equation for the simulating the basic model is shown below. In here, we need the initial stock value, we will need the drift, uh, let's say we need the um, lambda, we will need. Um, data data is basically a fixed time step. We will need um, the long term mean level, that is theta, and we also need the volatility coefficient, epsilon, right, in order to simulate this bus check uh, model. So n index um, 0, 1 is basically a standard normal random variable. So let's quickly jump into how and do this. All right, so first of all, we can give a name to this. Um, model that we want to um, simulate so let's say we'll call this bus check md so i'm going to say function right so in here i need some input values if you take a close look at this we will need the initial value we will need um, the speed of the mean re reversion lambda we will need delta we will need theta we will need epsilon right so let's quickly go back so i'm going to use this for the initial value i'm going to use l capital l for lambda and i'm going to use um uh, let's say theta i'm going to say theta yeah so this is going to be theta and i also need epsilon capital e for epsilon and dt for delta right that is great um or the fixed time step so if you look at this equation we have I can divide it into three components. This is my first term, second term, and the last term. So let's define the first term. So ft for first term. So I have initial value multiplying exponent of minus lambda times dt, right? That's the first term. Initial value minus lambda dt or delta. Then second term, let's see second term. I have theta into bracket 1 minus e exponent that so I have theta multiplying theta multiplying 1 minus exponent minus lambda times delta right 
the last term is made up of um, epsilon square root of that so epsilon multiplying square root of um, let me divide this yeah so I have my numerator and I have my denominator right so the numerator I have 1 minus let's go back 1 minus exponent all right exponent we have minus 2 times lambda times dt all right then you also have the denominator 2 times um, lambda right and then we multiply everything by the standard random variables we want to generate this let's use our norm one by default it has a mean of zero and the standard deviation is one so i'm going to get my results and the result is going to um we are going to add this three right so we need a first term second term and the last term to get our next value so that the next um stock or the next in the, um, interest rate is what i'm defining as a result so i have first term plus second term plus last term then results again this is going to display that result so that so let's quickly run this let me highlight this and let's run okay so let's see let me call a function varsity check model my initial value is let's say three um, lambda is let's say two theta is let's say one epsilon is let's say 0 0.5 and dt should be zero let me use 0 0.25 yeah so let's let's run this uh oh our norm our norm our norm our norm so yep so let's rerun everything all right so yeah we have a result so this is just for one um simulation right um we are getting one result we want to get a sample of a specific size so we have to model or add something to this um, model so let's say we need a sample size of 30. so let me say um sample size right so i have to get a container to store each of the simulated um, interest rates so i'm going to use r for that I say numeric sorry numeric numeric n right so this is going to be an empty vector to store the um the simulated um the simulated interest rates right so i'm going to use for loop in here for index i right in one to earn um, i want to store in this container um this simulation so i may paste it here yep so i want to store each of the um for each loop i want to store the simulated interest rate in this container so i can get 30 of them but you know that it must always contain the initial value so i'm going to use another um code of line to include the initial value so the initial value was three then i have my r right so this will include the initial value so i'm going to run I'm, i'll be working on this right instead of the r so let's run this yep so i'm going to work on the double r so let's take the head of r r yep so it has included initial value with the um subsequent values that follows right so we can even plot this let's try and plot this r, r type i want it to be a line graph so let's use l 
and let's say our while lib is going to be interest rates right interest rates right so um our x lib is let's say it is going to be time index time right index and um let's say our main is going to be let me check what i have here our uh, main i'm going to use this for the main so let me copy this simulating interest rate using my sec model all right so we are good to go so we can run this all right so we have um the plot of the interest rates if you rerun this you are going to get a different um, result altogether with a different plot so if you rerun it you're going to get different um, index different interest rate different graph altogether right so i think we are good to go so please um if you find value in this video don't forget to subscribe and also turn on the notification to get more updates anytime i post on this channel